Welcome to the instructional video for the uh, building of a go kit for the St. Albert Soapbox Derby. Uh, my name is Bob Fisher, I'm the race director. St. Albert uses the go kit as our base for our Soapbox Derby. Uh, we uh, are going to be doing an instructional video on how we build a cart so that people can see the simple instructions on how to do that. We'd like to uh, thank our sponsors, Fountain Tire, as our presenting sponsor, and all the sponsors who make the Soapbox Derby in St. Albert possible. If you'd like any additional information on our soapbox and our rules and our safety, please give us a look at stalbertsoapboxderby.ca. We're going to start the assembly of the, of the go kit. We'll assume that you have either purchased the four by four three quarter inch piece of plywood and pre-cut the components, or you have purchased the pre-cut kit from Fountain Tire. The first thing on the list is to assemble the cowl and the back seat. The cowl being the small triangular pieces and the part where the steering column goes through. The seat, the larger triangular pieces and the back. The next step in the assembly is the rear wheels. I've gone ahead and I've mounted this mounting bracket onto the wheel. You'll note that on the wheels there is a left and right. The left is a gold colored nut and the right is silver. They are marked on the head of the nut left and right, so you can't make a mistake. I'm going to show this. This is the top of the cart. Normally this wheel would go from the bottom side like this. The fat manufacturer supplies two very light small screws. Over the years our experience has shown that these wheels tend to loosen in the wood where the wood and the wheels tip. What we've done to correct that is mount the wheel with some sort of a piece of material of your choice or what might be available in your garage. Put a bracket across from wheel to wheel. Drilling a hole so you can either bolt it through the bolt through the plywood or onto the axle wheel. Uh, in our particular case we have access to a welder and we have just spot welded this bar onto the brackets. So there we have it, the back wheels are mounted. We'll move now to the front wheels. I've gone ahead and pre-assembled part of the, the front wheels. This is the axle that it comes with. This bracket here is where the steering column will, will go. The manufacturer of these kits seemed to think that tightening this set screw just slightly when you place the axle in and then putting it into the axle like so is enough to keep that wheel from turning and you tighten it up with the outside nut. There again our experience has shown us that those set screws work loose and have actually fallen out. What we've done is we've drilled a one inch hole in the bottom of the axle with a hole saw where you can get in with the Allen wrench to tighten that inside set screw. And it works very well for us. Then once you've mounted the two wheels, not forgetting left and right again, the axle just goes under the front of the floorboard. Two screws come with the kit. Steering column and steering wheel, of course. So you've mounted the rear wheels. You've mounted the front axle. You've mounted the steering, adding these arms 
There is no left and right to these arms. They will go either way. They hook on. They hook on here like this. Come across. And then this piece goes on here and the steering column here. Hopefully, hopefully you're getting that in the camera that you can see what I'm doing. Anyways, that's uh, assembling the steering. Once the steering, the wheels are on, the steering's assembled, the next step is the cowl. The cowl will slide down over over the steering rod like that. And then you mount the steering wheel with one cotter pin that goes through the hole here. The back seat is here. Now there's a couple things that you want to do. Uh, depending on the height of the driver, how tall he or she might be, you set them in the car and move the seat forward and back and fasten the seat to where the driver's arm lengths are most comfortable on the wheel. Our brake system, uh, the Go Kit assembly shows different brake systems. Uh, St. Albert has decided that we don't want children taking their hands off the wheels to apply the brakes. Um, we found that the other methods of braking are extremely hard on tires because they wear tires flat when they lock up the wheels. We came up with this braking system which we are very happy with and it works well. I'm just going to remove the cowl and wheel and show you how it works. It's very similar to uh, all these snow cruisers that kids have where they jump on the brake and the thing digs in the snow below the car, below the sled. So what you do is you disassemble this brake, take the brake pedals off, There's no left or right, don't worry about that when you're putting it back together. And due to our amateur welding, they may be, may be a little crooked. And what you do is you just slide this part through the bottom of the car. See if I can make a little room here so you can see better. You slide that through the bottom of the car. You take the two towers. like that. There again, when you have the driver sitting in the car, adjust this to the length of their legs. It, you've pre, you've pre-drilled the holes. You can move the bracket front and back to a, a shorter leg child or if the legs might be longer, right up to the front. So there is quite an adjustment for the age and height of the driver. Um, there's a spring on the bottom that fastens to return the brake. Of course, once you've assembled it, put, put the pedals back on, hook the spring up, and that pretty much has it. Here we are, back with the finished product. The, the Go Kit completely assembled and ready for paint. We're going to just recap, and I'll start at the front of the cart and go to the back. One thing that wasn't mentioned, uh, St. Albert requirements are a tow hook, because the cars are towed from the bottom of the hill to the top, so it requires a tow hook, which is available through us as well. It uh, requires seat belts, which we have found that the seat belts out of uh, car seats work very well. They are available through Amazon if you choose, or seat belts from a car, whatever works, but seat belts are a requirement. 
The other thing that I forgot to mention was one of our require, another of our requirements is the roll bar. The roll bar is provided in the pre-cut kit and it is shown in the instructions if you pre-cut your own. We'll start on the bottom of the car. I'll just show you the changes that we've, we have made that we are extremely happy with and work very well. Number one, this is the hole which makes accessibility to that Allen screw inside for the front wheels. Here's the brake. As you see, it goes down and just hits the ground. It's got a good rubber tread on it. It seems to last and work very well. The rear wheel brace, this one is tacked in place with a welder. It is at, sufficient to just bolt something either through the wheels or the screws that are holding the brackets on the plywood. Uh, don't forget left and right wheels. We'll move to the top of the machine. Brake adjustment. If, if the driver is a very short person, the holes are pre-drilled. This whole assembly can be moved back so the pedal is back this far. The seat as well right now is in the almost the far rear position. They are, are not resettable once they're glued and screwed in place, it's there. So we suggest that it's positioned at a comfortable spot for the driver. Um, one thing we do recommend, <coughs> excuse me, there is a class for best decor on a car. Don't quit here. Paint, sprucing up the car, fins, taillights, headlights, a hood, all will add to the fun of the event. And I thank you very much. See you at race day.